Psalms 34, starting at verse 17, it says, The Lord hears the, his people when they call to him for help. He rescues them from all of their troubles. Say troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. The righteous person faces many troubles. Say troubles. The righteous person faces many troubles, but the Lord comes to rescue each of them. I, I, I like how it says in King James, it says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, <laughs> but the Lord shall deliver me from them all. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for just another opportunity to be in your presence, to hear what you have to say. Lord God, I pray in Jesus' name you condition our hearts to receive. And Lord, help me, Lord. I need all the help I can get, Father God. And we all need all the help we can get. So we pray in Jesus' name you help us all. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. It feels good to be back at one service. I don't know about y'all. Feels good to be back at one service. Praise the Lord. Praise now if we can just get this AC thing right. <laughs> just wait. Praise God. God is good. Now, how many of y'all remember Keenan and Kel? Amen. Hey, the first thing you say was orange soda. <laughs> Keenan and Kel, two two best friends, and Keenan always seems to find himself getting in trouble in every single episode. Every episode, he, he's getting in trouble. That's, how, that's what happens. Kale was always the clueless one, didn't know what was going on, and always happens to just make more trouble for Keenan. Right? And every episode, Keenan will ask this question in a way only Keenan can do it. He would go, why? Y'all y'all remember that? Y'all remember that? He would do that every Why? Because he was always finding himself in, in greater trouble. And I started thinking about that word trouble. So I'm really thinking about that word trouble. Because I know in my house, whenever you got in trouble, <laughs> that means you was going to catch that belt. She said, period. The extension cord. She said, the chancla. In our house, growing up, trouble was a, was a byproduct of bad behavior. Uh, am I the only one whose house was like that? Tr Look, <laughs> Shawnee. Her eyes got so big, she was like, she's sitting right next to her mama, so she know what trouble. And <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hey, Marissa, you hold, hold me down here, please. She... Listen, trouble was a byproduct of bad behavior. So we, what we thought growing up that only time trouble would hit, her, hit us is when we performed badly or we didn't operate in a, in, a, in a state of obedience. We've associated trouble with disobedience. And this is what we've done is we've conditioned our hearts and minds to believe that trouble is a byproduct of disobedience. But what happens is once we become Christians, troubles don't leave us. And what we do is we've allowed, here it is, we've allowed trouble to cause us to lose our faith because we ask ourselves this question. We say, Lord, how is it that those who do evil, I feel the Holy Spirit already, those who do evil are getting all this money, they get the cars, they get the girls or the guys, whatever. they're doing all this evil, but they seem to receive all the blessings. But God, I work hard, I have an honest job, I clock in and clock out, if you got a business, I have my own business Lord I'm trying to do things the legit way say the legit way Look, some of us are like Lord I don't sell dope no more I ain't selling my body no more God I'm trying to do things the right way and you're saying and you're saying why is it that they're getting that but I'm not getting what I desire I've seen so many people fall away from the faith because of the trouble that remained even when they started to obey God I'm trying to help some people out because the trouble don't leave you. Nope. 
You come to Jesus, the trouble don't leave. I'm come, I'm come to break us out of that mind state. To think of as trouble as being a byproduct of disobedience. Tr- trouble comes with living. The problem with us is our perception of the people who are getting the money, who are getting, we perceive them as not being or walking in trouble. But guess what, baby? They got trouble too. They got trouble too. There are famous people struggling with insecurity too. There are, there are rich people struggling with suicidal thoughts, too. But the difference between us and them is how we perceive the trouble. Say perceive. But we have to shape our perception in the middle of the trouble to understand why the trouble remains. We need to have a godly idea of why we're in what we're in. Because yeah. trouble will always be there. I don't care how holy you are. Can I help some people out? My Bible tells me that Jesus learned obedience through the things he what? Suffer. Even Jesus had to suffer. And he done no wrong. He was completely holy, holy to the T. The most holiest person you've ever thought of. Just holy. But he still had to suffer, say suffer. We have to understand that trouble will always be a constant. It will always be there. So we ain't got to be like Kenan. Why? We're going to know it's there. It's going to remain the constant trouble. Why? The enemy is going to bring trouble to your doorstep. Hello? The enemy is going to bring trouble to your doorstep. Can I help some people out? Even God will bring trouble to your doorstep. (laughs) We thought everything was from the devil because it was negative. You better read your Bible. I'm, I'm trying to help some people out. Because there, there was this evil king. And God was in heaven. This, this is the Bible, right? God is in heaven. He's saying, how will I get this king to go into war? And then the Bible says a spirit came to God and says, I will come to him and fill his, the mouth of his prophets with a lying spirit. This, this was the spirit. Spirit came to God and says, I'm going to fill the mouth of his prophets with a lying spirit. And God allowed the, the, that spirit to go in. I'm trying to help some people out. God will even stir up some trouble in your life. Try to make some things happen because some of us are too stubborn to walk in obedience. Some people are too stubborn to walk in our calling. Some people are too stubborn to walk into our destiny. We want, here it is, we want our cake. And eat it too. I said it right for once. Because we all thought it was cake and eat it too. Look, some of y'all confused now. That, act, that saying actually comes from someone who wanted two different women. And one woman was named Kate and the other woman was named Edith. We all thought it was cake and eat. That don't even make sense. I want my cake and I want to eat it. Well, you can't eat somebody else's cake. Don't even make sense, but we show sure around with it. You want the cake and eat it too. But it's funny because we don't use it out of context. We don't, even though we say it wrong, we don't use it out of context. He wanted two women, but he can't have both. This is our problem. We, we, we want the Christianity. We want the blessings of it. But we don't want everything else that comes with the walk. Sufferings are part of the walk. I hate to burst your bubble. 
Sufferings is part of the walk. But there is a purpose behind the suffering. Tell your neighbor, there's a purpose behind this. I know, Sean, you don't like talking to your neighbor. She's like, listen. <laughs> she tagged me in the post. Like, um, we don't all like to talk to our neighbor. But you're going to talk today. That's your mama. No, just, I'll just play. But we have to learn that suffering is part of the territory. Amen. Amen. So we back, we're back in the text now. Psalms 34 and 17, it says the Lord hears the people, hear his, hears his people and they call, when they call for him and he rescues them from their troubles. Right. Now watch this. The Lord is close to the broken heart. He rescued them. Uh, he, rec- he rescued those whose spirits are, cr- I need to slow down. All right. Whose spirits are crushed. And he says the righteous person faces many troubles, but the Lord shall rescue them each time. Now the struggles, the troubles will continue to come. Right. And what he does is he shows himself in the middle of the trouble and he rescues you. But here it is. There are more troubles to come. Now, he continues to show himself faithful day in and day out. It's, I love how how Angie began to sing about the history that we make with God. When you make history with God, you have something to help keep you in the midst of the trouble. You say, Lord, you delivered me from the trouble last season. So I know you're going to deliver me from the trouble in this season so we pull from the history we made with God and knowing that if he did it before he can do it again and it's the same God right now it's the same God from back then so we can continue to pull from the history now he rescues his he rescues his people from trouble now I need you to understand though you're in the trouble you're with the redeemer I just want to help some people out because many of us, we wouldn't lose hope in the middle of the trouble if we knew who was with us. I'm going to say that over here because I didn't get the response that was warranted from that statement. If we knew who was with us in the middle of the trouble, we wouldn't lose hope in the middle of the trouble. Okay. Now. I'm looking at the author of this specific statement in Psalms. The author is David. Say David. David. Now, if anybody knows anything about trouble, if anybody knows anything about trouble, surely David knows about trouble. Like, we, we hear about the David that slain Goliath. That's the David we know, and we've grown to love. I'm David. I slain my Goliaths. I slain my giants. But we don't we don't we rarely talk about the side of David that had to act mentally handicapped just so he wouldn't get killed. We rarely talk about the David that had to want go through the wilderness for his run for his life. From the king, we, we love to talk about the Goliath, the victories of David, but we never really talk about the struggles of David. The David that had to cry out to God. Living out of the wilderness. You Listen, you got to live life looking over your shoulder. Because you don't know when your last day is going to be. We don't we really talk about that, David. But David knew trouble. Say trouble. trouble. David knew trouble. Right. So he has he he makes his statement and and, and I, I can pull from that because I know David's been through some things. And, I mean, there's nothing like pulling from someone who's been through it. Like if I'm if I'm starting a business, of course, I'm gonna come to Cliff because Cliff has a business. There's nothing like pulling from pulling wisdom from those who's been through it. Can I help some people out? Many of us, we falter because we don't gain wisdom from those who's already been through it. Wisdom comes from experience. Now, here it is. You don't have to have the experience to gain wisdom. All you have to do is get connected with someone who has gone through it. Some of us are hard-headed. We got to go through it. But no, I'm going to connect with some people. My my brother has a business. Chris has a business. I can connect with I can pull from him. I'm going to pull from David because David's been through some trouble. Well, pull the listen, uh, David. What let, I need all that, whatever you got, I need all that. 
And, and he says, like, the Lord, he hears the people when they call. Can I help some people out? In the midst of the trouble, don't shut your mouth. Y'all know those people who are going through stuff, and when you ask them, hey, how you doing? They be like, I'm all right. What's wrong with you? And they don't say nothing. Y'all you, you know, everybody knows a person like that. They don't say, and it's like pulling teeth trying to get whatever it is that they're going through to come out of their mouth. off the hook but we all know people like that we got people in our family like that we listen you trying to talk to them you try, you have everything that they need to help bring them out but they don't want to open their mouth so you can help them no one goes to the doctor and not tell the doctor what it is that they're feeling don't just go to the doctor hey, hey doc I'm here to see you the doctor's like oh so what's going on none You know, how are you feeling? The doctor's going to be like, get out of my office. I'm going to bill you and get out of my office. <laughs> no, we have to open up. He says the Lord hears the cry of it. Can I help you out? When you're in trouble, I need you to open your mouth. Amen. God does not heal what you conceal. Put, put that on your Facebook page. God does not heal what you choose to conceal. That's why he says we confess with our mouth. And listen, the Bible, that's why the Bible says confess your faults one to another. There is power in confession. Some of y'all bound right now because you don't confess your faults. You never told your wife or your husband about the pornography issue, and that's why, uh oh, and that's why you still go in it, you still, and you gotta hide, you gotta clear your history, you, uh oh. <laughs> going down everybody's room. We have to learn how to open our mouth. He hears the cry of his people. Right? The Bible also says he's, he says he's near to the brokenhearted. Y'all never thought like, why is it that when I'm brokenhearted, I don't want to talk to nobody? Why? Because your flesh don't care about your purpose. Your flesh do not care about you prospering. Your flesh wants to be in your feelings. So that's what happens. You stay in your feelings. You, you don't want to talk to nobody. And you got this, you got this excuse. I got to get my mental health right. So I just don't want to, I just don't want to talk to nobody right now. And then you put posts on Facebook. Like sometimes you got to separate yourself so you can get your mental. <laughs> trying to, trying to justify, trying to justify the fact that you don't want to confess what you, uh oh, it's your pride that's got you on Facebook. Uh oh. No, you got to humble yourself and open up your mouth because he's near to the brokenhearted. It's crazy that your flesh will make you feel like God is furthest in the midst of your broken heart when he's actually the closest. That's what it, this is what David is saying. And he's saying this as a byproduct of being in trouble. He's, he's letting us know when you're in trouble. You can count on our God being with us. You can count on our God hearing us. And you can count on our God being near to us. Our God is not a God who accepts you as his own, then leaves you out to dry. I'm going to say that again. Our God is not a God who accepts you as his own, then leave you out to dry. You will make it. Tell your neighbor, you will make it. I don't know what the trouble may be, but you will make it. 
He will come through. She will come through. I don't know who you've been praying for, but they will make it. They will make it. He hears the cries of the righteous. And here it is. I'm going to go back. Go back to it. It says, verse 17, the Lord hears his people when they call for help. He says he rescues them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. Have you been through some things? I know in 2020, many of us have gone through some things in 2021 as well that has crushed our spirits. He rescues those as well. And he says this, and the righteous person faces many troubles. I'm going to say that again. The righteous person faces many troubles. The righteous person faces, I'm just, I'm, I'm waiting on y'all to catch it. The righteous person faces many, he didn't say the unrighteous. He didn't say the evil. He didn't say the ones who struggle. He says the righteous person faces many troubles. I don't care how obedient you are. There's going to be many troubles in your life. And if we had the mentality to understand that trouble will come, I don't care how obedient I am, trouble's still going to come. I don't care how many commandments I can check off the box I don't care it will come the troubles will come I don't see why all these people are all in my business I don't see why all these people are after me I don't, I don't see how all these witches are after me can I help some people out it's because you're righteous it's because you're called it's because you're anointed that they're coming after you the way they listen they're jealous by your light you better say amen. Yes. I'm going to throw this mic at you. <laughs> Hallelujah. He says the righteous person faces many troubles, but the Lord will rescue them from them all. Will rescue them each time we have to know in our heart and in our minds that our Savior, the one we, we cry out to in praise and worship, the one we go crazy and nuts over on Friday Night Fire, that same God will rescue you from every trouble. Every trouble. Now, I went and I was like, Lord, well, what is trouble? And I looked it up, and it says difficulty or problems. The second definition says public unrest or disorder, right? So difficulty or problems. There's going to be some difficult moments in this walk, and there's going to be some problems. Say problems. There's going to be some problems in this walk. So now we have to say Lord, why? Why do we go through what we go through? What is the purpose for all this trouble? Lord, I went through a lot of trouble before I met you. Why I got to go through mouth? Is it even necessary? Why? why? Lord, why do I have to go? And that's Keenan. Why? Why do I have to go through more? Now, here, let's go. We're going to go through another scripture. Say Bible. Bible. We're going to go through the Bible. Right? All right. So, and he, let's see. Which one do I want to go to? <laughs> let's go to Romans 8.18. No, we're not going to go there yet. <laughs> let's go to Hebrews 5. Hebrews 5. Hebrews chapter 5, starting at verse 7, it says this. While Jesus was on earth, he offered prayers and pleadings with a loud cry and tears. And the one who could rescue him from death, he says this, oh, to the one who could rescue him from death. And he says, and God heard his prayers because of his deep reverence for God. Even though Jesus was God's son, he learned obedience from the things he suffered. In, his, in this way, God qualified him 
as a perfect high priest, and he became the source of eternal salvation for all those who obeyed him. I'm going to read that again. I need y'all to pay attention now, okay? While Jesus was on earth, he offered prayers and pleadings with a loud cry and tears to the one who could rescue him from death. Right. He says this. And God heard his prayers because of his deep reverence for God. Even though Jesus was God's son, he learned obedience from the things he suffered. In this way, God qualified him as a perfect priest. Now, I listen, I love we we love to make this statement. We say God doesn't call the qualified, but he qualifies those he called and what this this scripture it really pours into that statement that God he calls you but in the process of his calling he's qualifying you in the process of this walk he's qualifying you it ain't he didn't call you because you were qualified but he called you because he had an, a a road that was going to qualify you that he knew that you were going to be able to get through ah uh, so he says, Jesus learned obedience through the things he suffered. But in this, he was qualified. Ain't that what he says? Am I the only one who read this? This is what he says. God qualified him as a perfect high priest. He says, in this way, God qualified him. as a, And now here it is. Now we have to understand that there's a purpose for your life, Sheena. But in order for you to get to the purpose, I have to qualify you in the process. Are y'all hearing me? There's a purpose for you, Angie. But in order for you to get to the purpose, I got to qualify you through the process. Purpose void of process will cause you, here it is, to disqualify yourself. Say that again. Say it louder. It's true. Purpose void of process will cause you to disqualify. You will mishandle purpose without process. Okay. Let's just say I built a business. Successful one. Million dollar business. And I hand it over to someone who ain't never never ran a business before, fresh out of high school, don't know nothing about business, don't know nothing about nothing. And I'm like, Noah, take my business. And I want you to run it to success. And guess what? It's going to falter. Why? Because he hasn't been processed for it yet. He hasn't, he hasn't been processed for it yet. So even if Jesus had to go through a processing to become the high priest, For us, if Jesus had to, what makes you think you don't have to? The trouble is necessary for your process. Tell your neighbor, the trouble is necessary for for your process. The trouble is necessary for your process. And David understood that. David David knew from the beginning he was going to be king. Soon as Samuel came with that big old bottle of oil. That horn of oil, just, just bathing in oil. What you doing? I'm getting ready to be king. David gets anointed as king as a child, but he's not a king yet. He had to be processed into kingship. He can, he can, God didn't just, just like, boop, you're king now. He had to go through some things. He had to go through some struggles. He had to go through some trouble. Say trouble. trouble. And then, so let's, my phone be tripping sometimes. So now, now we go to Romans chapter 8 and 18. It says, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. And some of us, you're like, God, I want your name to be glorified in my life. 
I just want your name to be lifted high. My, when they experience me, I want them to experience you, Jesus. And that's our prayer. You're like, Lord, I, uh, uh, I, I put myself aside. I decrease that you may increase. But you got to go through some trouble. Say trouble. You got to go. Listen, he says the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be what? Revealed in us. That shall be revealed. There's a glory that God wants to bring out of you. There's a glory that God wants to be revealed out of you. Can I help some people out? It is actually in the midst of the trouble that your, uh uh-oh, the glory shines brighter. Okay. It ain't, listen, the fruit of the spirit isn't magnified when everything is good. The fruit of the spirit is magnified when your neighbor says something against you and you choose to love them back. When you choose to have patience in situations that doesn't listen here where your patience is being tried. When, uh oh, when you choose to have joy in the middle of the trouble. Fruit of the spirit ain't, it isn't really magnified when, every, when you win a million dollars and you show joy. That ain't showing the fruit of the spirit. You just, you just happy. Slap happy. But when they take it away and you still can have a smile on your face. There's a show I watch. We just started watching it. I just stumbled upon it. It's called The Wall. Anybody seen that show, The Wall? It's a game show. It's a game show, and in the show, they have these balls on the top of the wall, right? And they drop the ball, and it bounces under, on this wall. There's, like, little pegs. It bounces down, and there's little dollar amounts on the bottom, right? And as the ball is dropping, the people ask them a question. And when they, and you ask, when they ask the question, you have to answer the question before the ball gets to the bottom. You answer the question. If the question is right, the ball turns green, and, that, and whatever amount it, it, it drops on, it adds to your dollar amount. But whatever answer you get wrong, the ball turns red, it takes away from your dollar amount. So you get slap happy every time you get these questions right. That green ball drops into the dollar. There's even a million dollar slot. And you're just happy. Oh, yeah. I got, I got added up. I got one point. One lady, she had $1.4 million added up. Boy, the next red ball hit the million dollar slot. Took away a million dollars just like that. I found it very interesting that one second she's happy. She's happy, go lucky. But the next second she's devastated. But what she didn't realize, she still had four hundred thousand more dollars than she did before she walked into the building. But ain't it crazy how we love to look at the negative side of everything that's going on in our life? We're so pessimistic, but we're not thankful for what God has given us each and every day. Listen, you over here crying over the things you lost. I'm happy for the mercy I've gained. Uh, I'm happy for everything that God has placed in my life. I'm not gonna sit here and cry over spilled milk when God has a whole or, 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 or God has a whole carton of milk for you. What? Milk and honey, a whole land full of milk and honey. But we're, we we grow this pessimistic view of life. So when something negative happens to us, it's so minute to how good God is. But we love to focus on that little dot rather than glory in the vastness of his goodness. Okay, you can worry about that. I'm going to glory in God's goodness. Tell tell your neighbor, I'm going to glory in God's goodness. Uh -uh, You can can worry about that if you want to. But I'm going to glory in God's goodness. I'm going to find peace in God's goodness. I'm going to find joy in God's goodness. I'm going to be thankful for he is good. I'm going to try to help some people out. That's all. Okay. Well, watch this. That's, that's all. I'm going to close that out on this scripture. We're going to go all. Let's please all of us go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Second Corinthians chapter four. I'm going to read this in New Living Translation, but I really want you guys to grasp what is being said, what Paul is saying in this scripture. Second Corinthians chapter four and eight. Do you have it? I want everybody to be there. Okay. Matter of fact, I'm going to go to this other app and I'm going to read it from there. Okay. Second Corinthians chapter four, starting at verse eight. 
This is Paul speaking, all right? Watch this. He says, we are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We are knocked down, but we are not destroyed. Through suffering, our bodies continue to share in the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be seen in our bodies. Yes, we live under constant danger of death because we serve Jesus so that the life of Jesus will be evident in our dying bodies. Watch this, verse 12. So we live in the face of death, but this has resulted in eternal life for you. But we continue to preach because we have the same uh oh, the same kind of faith that the psalmist had when he said, I believed in God, so I spoke. Spoke. We know that God who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us with Jesus and present us to himself together with you. All of this is for your benefit. And as God's grace reaches more and more people, there will be great thanksgiving and God will receive more and more glory. That is why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. For our present troubles are small and won't last very long. Yet they produce for us a glory that vastly, say vastly, that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. So we don't look at the troubles we can see now, but rather we fix our gaze on the things we cannot see. For the things we see now will soon be gone, but the things we cannot see will last forever. That's what Paul is saying. We're being pressed on every side. The devil is not playing favorites. He's not playing. He's playing. He's playing for keeps. And he's coming at you whatever way he can. He's coming at you through your ex. He's coming at you through your children. He's coming at you through your mother and your father. He's coming at you through all sorts of ways. He's trying to press at you. And we're being pressed from every side. But Paul is letting, us, letting everybody know that though we're being pressed, it's for a greater glory. Tell your neighbors, for a greater glory. I'm being pressed, but it's for a greater glory. He's saying all this is going on. But you will not you will not be in despair. You will not fall in this moment. But you're being pressed. But you're not going to die in this moment. You're being pressed. But you're not going to fail in this moment. But there is a greater glory that's coming out of you. He says, I need you to remain steadfast. I need you to continue pushing. Though you're being pressed, I need you to push back. I need somebody with a push back anointing. I'm going to push back. Why? Because I know my God is with me. Though they're pressing me, I'm going to push back with love. Ah, though they're coming at me I'm going to push back with joy and peace I'm going to push back and I'm going to continue on the steadfast path to righteousness he says all of this is for your benefit can I help some people out there are some people benefiting from your pressing there are, there are people benefiting from you being able to be steadfast in the midst of the trouble there are, listen can, can I help some people out your children's about to make it because you were able to press through the trouble. Your family's about to make it because you're, about, you're able to press through the trouble. I, I need somebody to learn how to press through the trouble, to remain through the trouble, to remain steadfast. Watch this. He says, we know that God has raised the Lord and he will also raise us with Jesus and present us to himself together with you all of this is for your benefit and as God's grace reaches more and more people there will be a there will be great thanksgiving and God will receive more and more glory can I help some people out what's going to sustain you in the midst of the trouble is thanksgiving how thankful are you in the middle of the trouble uh oh how thankful are you for the trouble itself 
<laughs> we thank God for the people who are good, who are beneficial to us. But some of us need to thank God for our haters. Because why? Because the haters is actually processing you for greater. Uh, I thank God for them too. The Bible says to be thankful in all things, for this is the will of God. If you're not thankful, you're not in his will. Oh, wow. oh no. I'm trying to help some people out. I'm trying to help them out. If you're not thankful, you're not in God's will. Amen. Lord, what's the will for my life? He says be thankful in all things. You learn how to be thankful. You learn how to be rowing your boat down the will of the Father. Watch this. He says, there will be great thanksgiving. He says, and God will receive more and more glory. As you're thankful in the middle of trouble, God is being glorified more in your life. I'm, oh, I'm going to say it again. As you're being thankful in the middle of the trouble, God is being glorified more in your life. Can I help some people out? I, I just want y'all to try this. The next time trouble hits your house. You're going to say, you know what? I'm going to find a reason to be thankful. And watch. Watch how it changes the perception of those who are around you. Watch how much their faith grows from your ability to be thankful in trouble. Oh, that, that was impactful. I don't care how y'all responded. To me, that was impactful. Being thankful in the middle of watch how it changes everybody else's perception of the God you serve. They're going to want to know that peace you have right now. How, how are you able to have joy right now in the midst of this? Because I know what God is doing in the midst of this. Oh, okay, watch this. He says, he says and the God will get, receive more glory out of this. He says in verse 16 that... That is why we never give up. This is why we never give up. Tell your neighbor, never give up. Though trouble is present, we never give up. He says this, this is why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. God is renewing you. He's regenerating you. He's, uh, he's, he's making you greater day in and day out. Though we're being pressed in the natural, our spirits are being rejuvenated. God is, listen, he's giving you spiritual Gatorade. The electrolytes, The Holy Ghost electrolytes. He's renewing, he's regenerating you. And now here it is, as your opposition, can I, oh, oh I'm going to help some people out. Now, Ezra plays football. You play football. He's varsity, my guy. He plays football, right? Now, every day in practice, you do what is called conditioning, right? He's like, yeah. Conditioning is designed to exhaust you quickly, right? When you do, you're doing a whole lot of running during conditioning. You running, you, <gasps> where's my inhaler? You just, you doing a whole lot of running quickly. Now, is conditioning enjoyable? He's like, no. Conditioning is not enjoyable whatsoever. Like, in, during conditioning, you hate life. When I, when, when I was in school, they called it hell week. That whole week was conditioning. Conditioning is not, you want to quit. You're like, listen, boss, I'm about to hang up my cleats tonight. You go through it. But here it is. Once you get through the conditioning, you get to the game. And if you conditioned right, you will outlast your opponent. I'm waiting on somebody to catch it. If you condition correctly, ah, you will outlast the opponent. Now the team you playing against, they catching cramps in the fourth quarter, but you still, uh oh, you still have all your speed. You still have all your agility. Many of us were failing in the midst of our process because we failed. Here it is. We failed to condition ourselves and say, though I'm going through this trouble, I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to quit, but I'm going to get to that purpose. I'm going to outlast the attack of the devil. 
I'm going to outlast everything that the enemy throws at me. I'm going to outlast it. Why? Because I've conditioned myself in the trouble. Watch, watch this. He says this is why he says this is why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. He says this, for our present troubles are for a small moment. And it won't last very long. The conditioning does not last the entire practice. The conditioning only lasts for about 15, 20 minutes. It's only short compared to the actual game. The game is a lot longer. But what you do is you go through that trouble with all you have. And you go and you stand through it all. And you don't quit through it all. And what happens is, is now you have longevity. Tell your neighbor longevity. Now you have longevity. You know those people who've been in the faith for a long time and they continue to grow in faith why is it it's because they're willing to go through the trouble and continue to stand oh, he says this for our present for our present trouble are small it won't last very long yet they produce for us a greater glory that outweighs that outweighs the trouble i'm trying to help some people out the glory that's coming out of you outweighs the trouble The glory that's coming out of you, the glory that's being shined out of you, that people are going to see, it outweighs the trouble. The joy that we receive from Uriah outweighs the labor pains. The Bible even talks about that. Once the baby's in her, her arms, she forget about Can y'all be so joyful about the glory that you forget about the trouble? Can we, can we get so excited about the glory that we don't have a pessimistic view moving forward? Because we know that there's glory coming out of this. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to help some people out. Many people will enjoy your presence if you weren't so pessimistic. How can, people don't even want to be around you because you're so pessimistic, but how are you going to give them Jesus? I need you to shift your view. I need you to be thankful in all of this. I need you to find the glory, find the joy in all of this. He says... It won't last for a moment, he says, but the glory vastly outweighs the trouble. He says, verse 18, so we don't look at the trouble, but we would rather fix our gaze on the things we cannot see. We fix our gaze on God. We fix our gaze on the spiritual things. The moment we shift our gaze on what God is doing, not what your hater is doing, not what your boss is doing that don't like you. Not, not on, the, on the business struggling. No, no we're not going to fix our gaze on that. We're going to fix our gaze on the author and the finisher of our faith. We're going to fix our gaze on the alpha and omega. We're, we're going we're to fix our gaze. The Bible says we store up spiritual treasures. We don't store up earthly treasures. Ain't it crazy that our earthly treasure will cause us to forget, forget about the godly treasure? Forget about the heavenly treasure. No, we fix our gaze on the heavenly treasure. We fix our gaze on God, on the things we cannot see, and not on the things we can see. And the moment we do that, the trouble will become minute. Why? Because God's being glorified. God is being, I, I need everybody to allow God to be glorified in your life. In the middle of the trouble. In the midst of the trouble. Because it's coming. Can I help some people out? Trouble will rise more and more in this country. The, in the, the state of the country right now, in the way it's been heading, troubles, troubles are going to rise, unfortunately. I hate to say it. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. But this is prophecy. This is biblical prophecy coming to pass in front of our faces. Troubles will rise. But we as believers, we know that God is with us. Open up your mouth, speak, and fix your eyes on God 
Amen? Amen. Praise God.